I'm currently running a game of Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, for my D&D group. I used this old book I had to give the players a place to store all their important information about quests, characters, locations, whatever. I think it was a good idea, and the players seemed to appreciate it, but the book fell apart before I got very far filling it out. I was in a heated feud with my printer at the time, and so rather than trying to salvage the pages, I decided I would start afresh with a new, handwritten book. I also had a big bookbinding project on the horizon, but zero experience, so this was the perfect opportunity for me to learn the basics. I would make my very own book from scratch. I could see it so clearly in my head, and it was beautiful. I found some nice, soft canvas fabric in the perfect colour, and used Daz Bookbinding's method to turn it into book cloth. It took me a few tries to get the interfacing to stick to the fabric, but eventually I got there. I added some craft paper, and after trimming, I had my very own book cloth. I planned to use PVA glue to attach the book cloth to the boards, and to embellish it with iron-on foil vinyl. In a rare moment of foresight, I decided to do a small test first, worrying that the heat from the iron would damage the PVA glue. I'm extremely glad I did this, because as you can see, the glue failed before I'd even gotten the vinyl hot enough to bond properly. This meant I would have to apply the vinyl to the cloth first, and then glue it to the boards. Doing it this way meant aligning the embellishments correctly would be tricky, so I made sure to mark everything out carefully on the back and front of my book cloth. Rather than designing my own embellishments, I decided to be lazy and just copy the designs directly from the official adventure dice box. This is what I ended up with. I sent the designs to my cutting machine and then spent many, many hours weeding away the excess vinyl. I don't have any footage of it, but trust me, it was like so many hours. I think this level of detail was right at the limit of what this vinyl could handle, and I ended up removing a lot of vinyl I wasn't intending to. I took my time applying it to the book cloth, section by section, and then, after removing the backing, I went over it all again through a sheet of baking paper, just to make sure everything stuck down perfectly. Thankfully, as I was going for a worn and weathered look, accidentally losing parts of the design worked mostly in my favour, though I did cut and apply some repair pieces, particularly in the centre rings. I've since learnt to give my machine vector designs rather than raster and that does make things work out a bit better at this level of detail. I decided early on that I wanted this to be a binder rather than a traditional book, as I have a number of problems with using books for this purpose. I can never budget the correct number of pages for each section. The blank pages make it harder for the reader to find what they're looking for. And after committing to one way to organize the contents, I always, always decide I should have organized them a different way and they have to be organized. I'm sorry. A binder solves all these problems for me, and you can buy these inexpensive clips online in various sizes and colors. As you can maybe guess from the number I have on hand, this project may have triggered a minor binder making addiction in me. One drawback to this style of binder is that the Chicago screws used to secure the clip to the cover stick out at the back. This screams modernity at me, and would totally shatter the illusion that this could be a medieval book, when closed, of course. To get around this, I made the covers out of two layers of a thinner board. This way, I could recess the screws into the spine, leaving them invisible when covered by the book cloth. I used some flexible gap filler to hold them in place and make the surface of the spine as flush and smooth as possible. It worked well this time, but in another binder I've made since, the putty failed, making removing the clip impossible. I have a few ideas on how to avoid this in future, and I will present an improved version of this technique in more detail in my next video. The book cloth looked great, and I'd made a spine with the functionality of a binder and the aesthetics of a book. Everything was going well, so naturally I decided to increase the complexity. Inspired by the work of BBRCNGL, and seeing as I was making the boards out of two layers anyway, I decided my cover needed to be a bit more three-dimensional than originally planned. I made sure my layout on the inside of the book cloth lined up with the embellishments on the outside, and cut a matching window into one of my thinner boards. Then it was time for the first glue up of the project. It was fairly disastrous. The glue was too thick, and the brush I was using was way too small, 
so the glue had almost completely dried by the time I put the board in place. If I'd done a slightly better job, I might have ruined the book cloth and lost all my hard work. But because I screwed it up so badly, it barely stuck at all, and I was able to remove it with minimal damage. I thinned the glue with some water for my second attempt, but apparently still thought the brush I was using was appropriate. Despite this, it worked out much better this time around. After the glue had dried, I carefully trimmed the excess book cloth away from my window, folded it over, and glued it down. I then glued on the second board, which I had pre-prepared with some strategically placed book cloth. I began to get the hang of the gluing process, and even eventually started using my biggest brush, though I really should buy a much bigger one for this purpose. Over several days, I performed a number of gluing operations, and by the end, I had this. For the finishing touch, I used my new resin 3D printer to make a 3D version of the emblem from the dice box, which I immediately broke. I printed at least another half dozen, going through the process of learning how to work with a new type of 3D printing. But despite the growing pains, I'm very happy with this printer so far. I finally got a printer I was happy with, but after priming it and painting it a glossy black, it developed a serious warp. Fed up, I pressed ahead, hoping I could correct it later. I painted it a chrome silver and epoxied it into the place I had made for it in the cover. Off center. Under the heavy weights I had used to mostly eliminate the warp, the emblem had slipped on the wet epoxy and shifted off center. I should have made a jig to hold it firmly in position. I was pretty devastated, and strongly considered starting from scratch. But, long story short, I eventually convinced myself to accept the flaws and just finish it. The idea was for the emblem to look like enameled silver, so I used some pearl pigmented clear resin to try and emulate the enamel. I probably should have done some tests first, because I added far too much pigment and didn't get the subtle transparency I was after. However, while it may not have been exactly what I intended, it looked pretty cool, so couldn't be too upset with this result. The cherry on top was a rhinestone, which I filed down to fit and super glued into place. Finally, I screwed on the binder clip and the book was complete. Here's how it turned out. I think I'll need to experiment with thinner fabric in future, in the hopes of achieving crisper corners and a better crease at the joint. But I've learnt a lot already, and I'm pleasantly surprised with how well my foray into bookbinding went. Now I'm off to learn a very specific handwriting to fit my vision for this book, though I have recently, after discovering my issues were largely user error, reconciled with my printer. So I think I'll be using both printing and handwriting to fill the book. I suspect that means there will also be some font making in my immediate future. I hope to give an update on that in my next video, which will be on a project closely related to this one. Technically what you've just seen was a spin-off of that project, so if you liked this, I think you're going to like that one even more. But if you did like this video, or even just a small part of it, it would truly mean so much to me if you would leave me a comment and let me know. I've been Apifex, and I hope to see you again soon.